The Unshackled Waves, episode 174. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. And we're here in the studio with a friend of the Unshackled, uh, social media personality, Johnny Moore. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me on this show, mate. Now, I thought it'd be good to have you in the studio and just uh, discuss uh, some of the, the news this week. Obviously, the, the big news, the, the good news, is that uh, Tommy Robinson, he's free from prison now. That's great. I'm really, really proud to hear that. I mean, seeing that, watching that heartfelt video of him reuniting with his family, his wife and kids, and them going on a holiday for two weeks, that just warms my heart. I'm glad... I'm glad he wasn't put in prison for 11 months. He probably would have died in there given like probably six months because it's full of like, like probably like radical Islamists in there, like a bunch of extremist Muslims probably. And um, yeah, he probably would have gotten killed and he didn't even eat much in there. So he kind of looks a bit thinner and he's grown a bit of a bit, grown a bit longer hair now because of, um, he didn't really eat much because like, yeah, they were given by mainly like radical Muslim prisoners. And it was so sudden how he was imprisoned. He was uh, arrested for, for breach of the peace by live streaming outside that Muslim uh, game grooming trial in, in Leeds. And then all of a sudden he was sur summarily sentenced to uh, 30 months in, in prison, just like that, because he was already on a, a suspended sentence for a contempt of court in another uh, Muslim gang grooming trial. And then there was the suppression on reporting that he'd even been imprisoned. And it just seemed so sinister that he'd just been taken away in the middle of the night and we weren't allowed to even discuss that fact. Yeah, I know. I feel like it's a case of free speech being shut down. I mean, like, I, I was actually, believe it or not, I was one of the people actually watching the live stream because I usually watch other people out there, usually people with right-wing, centre-right views or anyone that loves their country or were reporting on the problem of, like, rising Islamic extremism or leftist politics or even feminism. And, um... Watching him get arrested for being outside of court when he was reporting on rapists, he gets like he gets arrested, and I was so shocked. And to even talk about it was considered to be extreme by the police. And as far as I'm concerned, breach of the peace. I'm not even sure what that means nowadays. I mean, like, I don't really, I don't really hear cops saying that to like mainly leftists because I was at the um, Israel-Palestinian event in Melbourne, which was about in May 19th, I believe. And when, when the Australian Liberty Alliance set up there and, um, they were there first and the um, Palestinian crowd showed up, we, we had to get moved onto the other side for breach of the peace. And, and at the, um, at the, um, Channel 7 news protest, like in the city, like about a week ago, during like the, um, Sudanese Australians, like mainly rising up and not really like calling it out from their own community to where all the crime is coming from. Not saying all of them are bad. But it's coming from their community, and when they just deny it, it's just stirring up more division. So when um, so when like right wingers or place pe people with centre right or conservative views showed up to the event, they weren't there to counter protest. They were there just reporting on the fact. But when some leftists that were who were there as well protesting with the Sudanese community, they noticed um they noticed them, and so they they called the police on them. So the police had to detain some of them for breach of the peace. And, yeah, it wasn't a breach of the peace, in my opinion. I believe they were just there. It's a free country. It's a free place. You can go anywhere you want. And now, because because it, like of the um, Antifa and the Sudanese there, it's now illegal. I mean, like, it was illegal for Lauren Southern in... That place I've got. Lakemba. Uh, Lakemba, yeah. She she was told to uh, not uh, approach the the mosque. She wasn't actually going to go in. She was just going to go around it. But she was told uh, it's a breach of the peace. And, and it seems it's such a vague uh, thing that breach the peace. What exactly does that mean? It, it means that basically, oh, we we think that somebody somebody may be offended by you. That what it seems to be. Uh, breach of the peace is basically offending somebody and. To, to a degree that uh, so, uh, when that person who you're going to offend, they, they somehow can't control their emotions and they're going to commit a criminal act on you. Yeah, I'd say it's probably also a sign of political correctness as well. I mean, like, 
everything nowadays just offends someone, so in order not to offend someone, you probably have to gonna blame yourself because of your, either mainly white people because of their white skin, because of our colonial history, or so on, but that's not the case, like, Jews these days, for example, are being blamed as well for everything, mainly for Israel and all that, like at the Palestinian rally, calling them evil as well, along with white people, and some of the, some of the Greens members, and some of the, um, voters for, for the, um, for them, have even called out, called out as such. Yeah, and we've, Tommy has given his uh, first uh, media interviews to Ezra Levant of Rebel Media and to uh, Tucker Carlson on, on Fox News, where uh, you described it before, he was uh, kept in solitary confinement. He didn't want to eat the food that was uh, prepared uh, for him because it was uh, by uh, Muslim inmates. The, the prisoners cook uh, each other's meals, so he basically survived on tins of tuna. And given the amount, it was uh, 40 pounds that he lost, if he'd been there for the whole 13 months imagine how how thin he w it would have been by by then uh, uh, it's it's been described he basically looked like a prisoner of war and if if he was a Guantanamo Bay uh, detainee there would have been all the human rights groups uh, all the the media would have been all over this grave injustice yeah basically like because he's like he's not since the media hasn't really like um, put him on in the spotlight as such no one really knows what's going on. The media doesn't report on him in prison or what ha what he is. So yeah, he's t so far he's talked to Tucker Carlson of uh, Fox News and he's talked to um, Ezra of the Rebel, and um, yeah, they're pretty much like the only two like mainstream media who um who do like interviews with him. And uh, yeah, they're pretty much the only ones. I don't I like call me call me paranoid, but I think some of the other mainstream media out there say like. For example, in Australia, 9 News, 7 News, 10 News, they wouldn't report on the fact that he's been let out and a lot of right-wingers roaming the streets at the Tommy Robinson protests in the UK about a couple of weeks ago now. Because, um, yeah, yeah, the media labels them as far-right, which is like, so, so far, 9 News and other British News in there. But when Tommy Robinson's let out, they don't really report on that. It's just, yeah. No, uh, we at The Unshackled were one of the first, so as our uh, UK affiliate affiliate uh, political light and also cauldron pool reported it uh, first i only got the the mainstream media news alerts a couple of hours later they probably didn't even bother to to, to show up but uh, uh, t uh tommy and his uh, supporters were were all there and it was uh, basically people learnt uh, from tommy's official facebook page that that he was free i mean thank god we in live in the internet age and even though there was the the mainstream media blackout for uh, f uh, a couple of weeks, uh, the, the the free Tommy movement, it was impossible to suppress. Yes, it was impossible to suppress. He's still on our side in politics, and if he's from another country, it doesn't matter. We all unite together with our same opinions, because some people, pretty much most people on the left nowadays in 2018, they shut us down for freedom of speech and for your love of this country. Everything nowadays is racist, sexist, bigoted, homophobic, transphobic, or so many more. Like, not to mention the fact that they're saying there are more than two genders now, and so on and so on, and it's just getting ridiculous. The fact that they label us, like, as fascists and Nazis, we're pretty much the resistance in politics. I mean, like, Tyra Robinson was just reporting on one thing outside of court. Next thing you know, he's in jail. I don't even, I don't, I don't, I can't even imagine what his kids or wife must have felt like when they heard the news. So, um, yeah, everyone, including his cousin, Leon Tufts, he, um, he's helped, he helped organize the event in London to bring about Tommy Robinson to get him out of prison and to support free speech. And so I think that's what partially worked and what got him out just like a couple of days ago. And like, I'm proud, like this is just resisting political correctness and against like the leftist elite. That is like shutting down what right wingers and conservatives think. Because as far as I'm concerned, all these people I follow are not far right, and most of them aren't even alt right either. I mean, like they're just regular, normal people, conservatives, right wingers, centre right, or even like, yeah. So like, yeah, it was just glad to um, I'm just glad that he's out of prison, and I'm glad that everyone else around the world, not just the UK. And in the US, Canada as well, and here in Australia, we're all rising up for Tommy Robinson, and um, we're glad he's out. 
Well, the Royal Court of Justice, which uh, quashed uh, Tommy's uh, conviction, if you look at the judgment, they were pretty uh, scathing of the, the process which uh, saw Tommy in prison in the, in the first place. And uh, you, you would think that uh, given that uh, that uh, higher court has said, like, look, this yeah, Tommy wasn't allowed due process, that he could get some sort of compensation or, or something like that for false imprisonment. Now, he's still got to go through a, a retrial for contempt of court and he's on bail for that at the moment with the the only condition is that he appear at that uh, future hearing so the uh, it's not over yet but at least uh, Tommy he's reunited with uh, uh, his family his followers he's uh, taking those uh, two weeks off I, I know with his interview with uh, Ezra <laughs> Ezra mm -hmm. advised him like oh, you know please uh, don't uh, go go uh, go this far again like uh, even if uh, uh, we only get 90 percent Tommy, that's still better than uh, anyone else. Yeah, yeah, it is better than anyone else. I mean, like, it could have been a lot worse, though, for we know, like, because everything's so politically correct nowadays, he could have been in jail for years, probably. But 11 months, and now only just three months, I mean... Two months or three months since he was, like, arrested? It was late May, uh, uh, which it was, so it's been uh, just over two months. Yeah, so just over two months when he was arrested and he's finally been released now. Yeah, it could have been a lot worse, but after, like, yeah, he's on bail right now, but you kind of expect what, after the judge and, and the convicting of him, you would kind of expect him to be a little bit liberal biased or something because of um his views and everything he's done out there. I mean, like, some media outlets got the opportunity to label him far right as such for when he was defending himself against um, these Antifa thugs when they attacked him at this um local McDonald's, I think. Yeah, he gave them a good uh, beating there. I mean, uh, let's remember he he started he started a street movement, the English uh, Defence League. So he's he's been in this uh, on the front line of this battle for uh, for a number of years now, and he he was his activism. Uh, I. I would say he was the main person that red pilled me on the issue of uh, Islam and the the influence that it's having on on Western countries. So I've followed him uh, since then. It's been great that it be, he's been able to maintain this. He's been able to uh, f uh, hold firm and defend his position under a hostile uh, mainstream uh, media. But uh, yeah, definitely, uh, I think I agree with Ezra that we, we, we just want Tommy for a while to just take some time. Uh, with, with his with, with his family, and then uh, get back to because obviously Britain's Islamization is still uh, continues. I mean, we're lucky that the the, the terror attacks seem to have um, subsided a bit, but yeah, uh, places in London now they uh, they resemble Islamic countries. Yeah, I'd say you probably have Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, to thank for that. But yeah, because of this, the UK has more voices, including Tommy Robinson, Nigel Farage, who I'm excited for. He's such a good lad. And um, yeah, you have more of them out there too. Like the, with the English Defence League, did did Tommy Robinson, correct me if I'm wrong, did he leave the English Defence yes, League? Yes, he did, because that was it was too difficult a movement to manage. There were a lot of undesirables who were, were joining, and so he decided to move uh, uh, towards uh, conventional activism. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say so. But, um, yeah. Yeah. And it's probably this uh, decision that's restored a lot of people's hope in, well, uh, the British legal system, that it hasn't become a total uh, police state and there there is uh, hope. Uh, I'm glad that um, our UK affiliate Political Light, they, they, uh, the editor hasn't been taken away in the, <laughs> the middle of the, the night. He's going from strength to strength. So they're, uh, the, the people of the UK, they're, they're, they're not uh, sitting back and just taking it. They're, they're, they they want to save their, their country. And uh, uh, if, if enough of them make some noise, then there, there is well, courts at least that are that are willing to to listen and uh, have proper legal processes, which we got from Britain. I mean, our legal system is based on the British system. It's good to see that uh, that's still in place. Yeah, it's great to see it's still in place. And it's like you said, thank God we got the internet nowadays because, like, we live on the other side of the world, so we need to connect closer to our British and English allies over there in the UK. As you said, it's all going to hell. The Islamization of the country there is real, and so. We all need to unite together there, and we need to report on the news, what's really going on. That's why we have 
alternative media out there, out outlets. And so, um, yeah, it's a, it's a vital issue and it's quite complex. So um, the more we report on this in the UK and the more we get information from our brothers and sisters over there, the more closer we can get to um, resisting the politically correct madness going on over there. Because it's happening, it's not just, yeah, it's, it's all, it's, like I said, it's happening in places we can't do anything about it right now, unless you want to travel over there. But, yeah, we've got the same problems they're having, and we just need to connect closer to them. And so far, it's been working out. Avi Yemeni and Debbie Robinson of the Australian Liberty Alliance just went over there, connected with our um, fellows over there. And um, so far, so good. I'm proud of what's going on there. I got to follow a few more people. I got to know some more people who are new to this new political movement, to this new counterculture, and so on and so on. I'll get to see even more. Oh, well, let's go back home uh, this week, where probably the most bizarre and uh, uh, probably annoying story was that the Victorian Government uh, Department of Health and Human Services, we were told it wasn't an official video by, uh, by them, but it featured a lot of the people that work there, uh, uh, called uh, They Day, where it interviewed a whole bunch of people in the, the department who liked the they, them pronouns, who identify as non-binary or uh, whatever else uh, gender. And uh, let, let's have a look at a bit of the video here. I love gender neutral pronouns. I've been using them for, I don't know, maybe 10 years. What I love is that I think gender neutral pronouns best reflect my gender identity. So when people use them, I feel really affirmed and really like myself. For me, they make me happy. I feel happy when, when people refer to me as they because it feels true to myself. A person is a person um, and maybe they are defined by those classic gender roles, but it's not necessarily who they are. You know, for a, a world and a culture that hasn't really done a really good job of having anything other than highly gendered pronouns, mm. using they is, it's a really good option. I mean, they're pretty much as they look like you would expect them to look. <laughs> so it would seem, yeah. And th these people, uh, like, they're, they're employed by, uh, as I said, the, the State Department of Health and Human Services. I mean, aren't they supposed to be more focused on delivering frontline services, looking after our hospitals, human services? Isn't that looking after family issues yet? Their most important thing is that basically re-engineering the English language. So we have to refer to people as them, they. And if we don't make this big adjustment because they believe that they're special, then we're committing basically an act of violence against them. It is completely ridiculous. To be honest, I didn't think this was true. As soon as I heard the news, I was laughing. I was laughing my buttocks off. And when I've looked at this a little bit more, I'm like, how ridiculous is it getting nowadays? I mean, like, you got people now coming up with gender neutral terms putting gender neutral like bathrooms into the AFL stadium and you've got it spreading more else you have to start referring to people as they or they bees and I just heard a few months ago that this um sex expert or um like expert in um ch child care or whatever she said that you need to ask your baby for consent before changing the nappies it's it's ridiculous it's just it's political correctness gone mad I mean, like, when I see this gender-neutral thing coming up ne now, what's next? What's what's going to be more offensive next? What's going to change now? That's like, this is like one of the reasons why I'm against progressivism and all that as such. I mean, like, it just gets way and way too much out of control. I mean, like, yeah, like, like if we don't, like, put a stop to all this, like, PC nonsense, like, it's just going to get worse here as it is going on, like, in um the UK and such. I mean, like, the last thing I want... For our society is to become like Sweden, where everything is offensive, everything's blamed on men, everything's blamed on they, being offensive towards transgenders, and even mentioning the word Mr. or Mrs. is offensive to a person of third gender. 
<laughs> or using the term husband and wife, you can't use uh, that uh, any anymore. Now, it, it was probably an unwanted uh, scandal for the Victorian government because they're, uh, uh, Daniel Andrews' Labor government, they're in the middle of uh, dealing with the, the Rorts uh, for Votes scandal where there's a police investigation now into uh, Labor in the 2014 state election uh, using uh, electorate stuff for uh, diverting them to other MPs' uh, campaigns. And so they, they said, oh, it's it's not an official video. It's 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 on this channel called the the Pride Network, but all the people are all employed by the 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 state government. So it pretty much has the the stamp uh, of approval. Uh, I mean, they can tr they can try and distance themselves. I mean, Daniel Andrews has enabled uh, all of these. Uh, things with his uh, social justice uh, virtue signaling and what, what uh, enrages me about uh, these videos is that all of these people they're on uh, they're paid by the the taxpayer and like you can see what their priority is and if you look at the, you can see the offices there where they're filming in the department of health and human services it's pretty uh, i'd say flash looking office would have cost uh, a lot of money to to build it it seems to be uh, well resourced well yeah I don't think Daniel Andrews even seems to be paying attention to what the people really have going on in the city and in the state as a whole. I mean, like, everyone's all got problems, we're all facing problems with the Sudanese community, crime waves, and our taxpayers, and um, Daniel Andrews, I don't think he even knows what he's doing. Like, he doesn't seem to be, like, putting in much effort into doing those, like, sorts of things, into sorting them out, and for the rest of the government, which is, like which the Labour Party has more seats in than the Liberal National Coalition, which is more centre-right on politics. And that would kind of like, maybe just, just maybe, listen to a little bit of our problems. But there's still one of the reasons why we need to get RV and the Australian Liberty Alliance in at the end of the year, like by November. So yeah, Daniel Andrews, like, instead of doing all that and fixing the problems for our state, he's, um, he's pretty much doing what feminists and leftists want him to do. Like he said that, like men are to blame for these problems and rape crimes against women when men also get raped as well even though that's pretty low they're still a thing and men get raped by other men as well and um it's not just women that um that have got these problems as well it's men too and when and we like we need to work together on that but when daniel andrews just like blames um full-on men for that i don't i don't consider him to be a good role model as i um as like the well, premier for our state. Yeah, well, let's remember, like he, he said, all men need to change after the death of Eurydice Dixon. But let's not remember that he basically bullied a, a female minister uh, out of uh, cabinet, uh, Jane Garrett, who was the emergency services minister, who wouldn't do the, the bidding of Daniel Andrews' uh, firefighters union friend, Peter Marshall. And so she resigned and put in a, a bullying complaint. Uh, luckily, she's uh, gained... Um, pre-selection for this election so she hasn't been completely forced out of the the, the parliament but it's it's not very good treatment uh, by one of your uh, female colleagues exactly and the problem is the media is not reporting on this as well so daniel andrews just gets a free pass i mean like yeah and when after that that woman eurydice dixon i think that's what her name is when she was like brutally murdered god rest her soul like like, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but a lot of women, like, die every day. And why is it that specific woman, when she dies, there's some sort of a, um, like, a clone of a Me Too movement where Daniel Andrews and so much else start, like, putting this on men? Well, remember when that uh, African girl was murdered by another African at that uh, Airbnb apartment in the in the city well the the media got in trouble for reporting it because it was african crime it seemed that these leftists they they only cared that a a white woman was murdered in the, the inner city but when an african is the victim because they're a victim of other african violence then oh it's it's really bad to report it i mean it's totally bizarre so <laughs> yeah i mean like I think they just, I think they just, the leftists just hold a grudge against white people because, um, yeah, they just want to deny what's truly going on out there. When this black woman was murdered by another black man, yeah, like, it's all what, like, Antifa just tries to put it on, on the white person before it even, like, before it's even, like, 
revealed, like, before the full the details of the murder are what happens next. I mean, like, yeah, when they protested outside Channel 7 for reporting on the, on the truth, I'm a bit worried. Channel 7's pretty center-left, and they seem pretty left-wing after what they said about Lauren Southern calling her a fascist, yet they actually report, for once, they report on the truth about these Sudanese crime waves, which are particularly going on. White people commit crimes as well, but statistically, the crime wave is bigger in the Sudanese and, second, the Somali community. But right now, the Sudanese community has a problem with their own, and they're not acknowledging it. So when Channel 7 News reports on that fact, a lot of leftists out there believe it's just so-called racism and fascism so they think that they're helping the Sudanese community by telling Channel 7 not to report on these crime waves and if Channel 7 gives in to their political correctness and all their threats and and fear they're allowing Sudanese crime to work because then they get a free pass and then Antifa's um technically in a way like indirectly harboring them to commit more crimes and make our city become like San Francisco. And we all know San Francisco is a progressive liberal hellhole and literally a shithole. I believe we need to do the right thing here. The Sudanese community needs to do the right thing here and then things can work out better for everyone. Well, going back to the they, them uh, video, and as I said, this has been enabled by uh, Daniel Andrews. I'm not sure if you're aware, but uh, his government tried to pass a birth certificate uh, reform bill, which basically means that you could change the, the gender on your birth certificate without having to go through surgery or a formal gender transition. You could change your gender any six month, or every six months to male, female, or whatever so you know you could put any any made-up gender on the the birth certificate yeah I, I don't that's just wrong that's just wrong we shouldn't be doing that and we shouldn't be giving into more of that that's all that is just political correctness i know political correctness is so cliche now but that's what it's all part of you can choose to be a female or a male or because of your feelings facts don't care about your feelings like Sure, I have feelings as well, but I'm a man of logic and substance. Like, when they, um, like if, let's just say, if I, if, if the male bathrooms were full, and then I really had to go to the bathroom, I could just like, you know, if you've seen the South Park episode, you put a pink bow on your head, and then you identify as a woman because you're not comfortable with the sex you were assigned to at birth, so you're identifying with the gender of your choice, and you just walk into the female bathroom. That's probably an easy way for perverts to do now. And so when perverts and pedophiles will even find that out, they might as well just go into the women's bathroom, because they get to choose their own gender. And putting this into the um, birth certificate or so on, it's just, it's ridiculous. And we've and we got to put a stop to it. Like, this is going to corrupt the youth of our future. There's a reason why Generation Z is probably becoming a little bit more conservative than the millennial generation. Uh, I'm amazed at that video that they only wanted us to use one extra set of pronouns, they, them, because let's not remember, we've been told to use Zizer, there's all of these uh, other ones, so <laughs> I would give them some credit, we only had to learn why, and, and look, like, I've, don't get me wrong, if, like, if like, a person I know transitions genders, I'll use their, their correct pronoun, because we all want to be polite to people, we don't want to be uh, unnecessarily rude, but when you to uh, told to basically uh, f defy the the English language, uh, I think th that's asking too much. Exactly. Just remember, I'm, I'm not a white supremacist or a white nationalist for saying this, but this is Australia. Like, we're still a majority country of mainly, like, people of white, but... I don't care what race you are, what ethnicity you are, as long as you respect Australian culture and love our country and its values and you speak English. We are an English-speaking country. If the government calls it the de facto language, then I don't care. It's still English. So, yeah, you speak English, and when you tell that to someone, it shouldn't be offensive, because the majority of people in this country do speak English. Now, uh, Johnny, uh, like I said at the beginning, we've seen you at a number of public events uh, around uh, Melbourne. You play, uh, we've obviously got some big ones coming up. We've got uh, Nigel Farage coming. We've got the, the March for Men organised by Sydney Watson. You plan to uh, keep uh, reporting around Melbourne and uh, posting on your social media? Yes. Yes, I will, Tim. I plan on 
going to these rallies more often. I plan on going to these events as well. Whatever like is in um whatever like favors our cause and whatever spreads the message out there in this world. And so yeah, I'll probably be at the um Nigel Farage when he comes down over, assuming I don't have to like assuming I'm not too busy. And at the March of Men, I will definitely be going down there because we need to get the word out. Like since like I'm okay with first wave feminism because first wave feminism was pretty much all about voting rights and so on. But not second wave feminism because that's when they started um, screaming out for abortion and so on. And third wave feminism was just almost like female supremacy and hating on men, trying to make women trying to make themselves look ugly, ugly when they believe in the conspiracy theory of the gender pay gap, which I personally don't believe in the gender pay gap. I think it's just a conspiracy theory made up so women can achieve full on equality. But let me tell you. There is equals here. There is equal to a man here in the West than they ever will be in the Middle East. I'll tell you that much. And so, men are pretty much blamed for everything now, mostly, especially by the third wave feminists and what feminism now is nowadays. As Lauren said, feminism basically nowadays is a bit irrelevant and it's pretty much hating on men. So, if anything, Stefan Molyneux believes that there should be a men's rights movement, even though it may seem very funny to a lot of people out there who even don't even get involved in politics about a men's right movement. It's very funny, but it's actually true. A lot of men are getting the blame for everything, like when it comes to women's issues and so on. And um, Sydney Watson is a woman. She believes she should have the same rights as everyone else, but she's not a feminist. She sees them for what they really are. So she's organized this event and campaigning against racism and fascism, which is actually left-wing. Don't be fooled by their hiding behind racism and fascism about them what being there against but yeah they're planning to counter her because she wants to stand up for ma for men and masculinity because it's okay to be that it's completely normal it's like it's what man men are for and so um yeah so i'll be there at that rally um everyone else including you will be at that yep, rally as definitely. well Arby will be there the young conservative will be there everyone else i know will be there and so, yeah, it'll be a big day. We'll, we'll probably be on the news again. And so, yeah, this will help spread the message against, like, feminists and feminazis who don't want, like, men to have a free say in it because they still think they should get the blame for everything. It's bullying, and that's what we're standing up against, if you think about it. Well, I'd like to encourage all of our Unshackled followers to uh, like Johnny's page on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and subscribe to his YouTube channel. Thanks for chatting with us today. Uh, we'll, we'll certainly uh, have you back uh, sometime, and yeah, we'll uh, obviously see you at all these events. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you very much, and thank you to the Unshackled as well. I am very proud to be here, and I look forward to working with you in the future on these subjects. So thanks once again, everyone, for your company, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and comments.